So this is a unique style of tracing question that shows up when we cover files. Uh, in this question, you're given a set of code, a complete uh, program, and you're given the output of the program. And your job is to figure out what the input file contains. The one piece of information you aren't given is the contents of this input file. You are told, uh, the prompt is a bit more verbose than this, but you are told that this file does exist, because obviously for the sake of keeping the question short, there isn't even a check here to validate that the input file pointer came back to be non-null. Um, you are told the file does exist and the program runs and generates this output and you've got to figure out what was in that file uh, okay so I, I this is sort of reverse engineering uh, and I'll talk about how I would go through this so what I would observe is um, in my output I'm printing out these words and uh, if you take a look uh, it's, it would be great to have them both on the same page but if you take a look the words that it's printing out in square brackets are taken directly out of the file by fscanf uh, and so the key thing there is the square brackets are not part of the input. The square brackets are added by the printf statement. So apparently my input file has to contain the two words raspberry and pear. And then there are these two numbers here. Uh, and if we take a look at the code, what's happening is the numbers getting printed out at the end were actually what was being produced uh, in this section here. So what's happening is uh, up at the top, fscanf is being used to read numbers from the file and it keeps going as long as there are numbers to read. Notice that it, there's nothing specific in the way the code is written that dictates exactly how many numbers fscanf is going to read here. It'll just stop as soon as it hits any non-numerical data or the end of the file. We know that fscanf, of course, will stop when it hits the end of the file. It'll stop being able to read a number for me, but it will also stop when it hits some data that it can't read as a number, for example, text. So what I'll notice is I read a bunch of numbers with fscanf and I count them. I have my count variable here that I'm adding to every time I read a number. When I'm done, I print out the count and the sum of all of those numbers. Uh, and they are all integers. And so what I'll observe in my output is that both the count and the sum are equal to 5. So I'm reading 5 numbers and they are adding up to 5. Now, because numbers can be positive, negative, or zero and still be read as ints, there actually are lots of possibilities for those five numbers. And in a question like this, unless you are told otherwise, any input file that meets the criteria would get full marks. And so there actually are, there could be multiple uh, correct answers for this question. The key is, I want there to be five distinct integers, uh, and I want them to add up to the number five. And that's at the beginning of the file because I can see that those numbers are being read before I read those words. Okay, well, I'll just, how about this? One, 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 one. Now, we also know that because of the way fscanf works, if I ask it to read numbers over and over again, the numbers could all be on the same line as long as there are spaces between them, or they could be on different lines. Th these are two equally correct ways of getting fscanf to read five integers. Okay, so there are five integers, one, 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 in a row, and and they add up to the number five. Okay, that works. And then fscanf stops because count isn't equal to six, which means obviously fscanf is, um, the loop is ending as soon as fscanf can't return numerical data. And that means that whatever's after the last number, the fifth number one, has to be something fscanf can handle when I give it percent %d. And that could be a lot of things. It could be like a decimal point or something. But because I know that the next thing my program does is try to read words, I guess it makes sense that the next thing after my number, my five uh, number one, um, numbers one, is to have one of those words that it read. And so after it reads the numbers, after it gets out of this first loop, it enters a second loop where it keeps trying to read strings of text up to 99 characters long. And then it prints them out. It prints them in square brackets so we can see exactly how many characters it ended up reading. And it reads the word raspberry with a capital R. And it reads the word pear with a capital P. And then it stops. Then it's over because then we print out this count and sum that we'd saved up from before. Now, unlike with numbers, fscanf, when you give it a percent %s, fscanf will only stop if either it hits a space uh, or it hits the end of the file. But we know if we're looping over the words in the file like this, um, the loop is going to keep running until the file, until we've reached the end of the file. fscanf will not stop. If I ask it to read a word, it'll read digits or letters or symbols, anything other than a space. And if I keep calling it 
over and over again, it'll read every word in the file. And that's a sign that if this loop ever ended, the file must have ended too. And so here, I think what I have in my file is the word raspberry. Certainly, that comes next. And then the word pear, after one or more spaces have elapsed, and then the file has to end. There can't be anything in the file after the word pair, or else it would have gotten picked up and printed out by this call to fscanf here. And so here is an example of a correct answer to this question. The number one five times with some amount of space between them, whether it be a space or a new line is irrelevant because of how fscanf works, followed by the string raspberry with a capital R, and then again, some spaces, and then the word pair with a capital P.